Welcome to Indo Battery, where we are sharing our endometriosis journey and learning along the way. This podcast is in no way meant to diagnose or give medical advice, but a place where you can gain knowledge and information that can help you to not feel alone as well as become your best advocate. We want to learn with you and support you wherever you are in your journey. Thanks for joining us. I'm Shelby. And I'm Alana, and we're Indo Battery, charging our life when Indo drains us. Welcome back into Battery. Today, we are going to have fun because that's what we do here. And we have the honor of joining forces with Dr. LaRiche, Dr. Duke, formerly known in our world as Eurobro, Endobro, and then as well as Chelsea is here to join us. And we are just going to go over kind of the summit and the experiences we had and the benefits of having both the patients, the doctors and all the different practitioners. So buckle your seatbelts. Let's go people. <laughs> it's going to be a ride. <laughs> Thanks guys for joining us today and taking the time to yeah. do it. Thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah. You, you forgot one uh, group of people in your list of people who were at the end of summit. Who did I forget? The the ad- that's well, the ad- she said that's true. everybody, but what about the advocates? That's you guys. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we're advocates, but we're also patients, but actually there are advocates there because there were a lot of Mike, advocates. There. Yeah, there mm-hmm. were a lot. Mm-hmm. Mike Baker showed up by himself. Yeah. As yeah. an advocate. And I was like, yep. Yeah. yeah. High five. He was awesome. Yeah. So Mike, Mike runs uh, heritage health, which is a, a chain of clinics here in Northern Idaho. That's for, um, it's like a not-for-profit, but they, they tend to see more of the patients who are maybe underinsured or uninsured and they run a series of clinics for those uh, primary care clinics. Um, and Mike doesn't mind me sharing, but Mike's daughter, um, suffers pretty terribly from endometriosis. And, um, so that's why Mike decided to make the journey, but Mike's, Mike's a really good guy for sure. Mm -hmm. So, he's a stellar guy yeah he is so and a fantastic dad mm-hmm. yeah he's a good dad. dad he's a great dad yeah. yeah um he it was interesting we had him and his family on his wife and daughter on and oh, it really? was yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah that hasn't launched yet but yeah and um she it's interesting to see her response to having her dad be so public with it and now they're like we're going back to the summit next year because they're all going to come. They're all coming. Yep. Yep. Great. So, so good. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be good. Great. Yeah. It was, it was good. Cause I, I think for us, I walked in and I definitely had some doctor trauma. We talked, did we talk about this the other day? Larisha was, we were talking about this with you, right? That I traumatized the three. Yeah. Like the Probably. trauma. <laughs> so <laughs> you did, <laughs> but we, I, we like walked in and I totally was like these, I'm afraid of doctors. Like even walking into the summit, I was afraid of doctors. I was like, I don't, I don't think I can talk to doctors. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm afraid of other doctors too. And we can get into that in a little bit, but I mean, I, you know, where I am. Um, and I think a lot of one of the reasons the endometriosis summit is so important is because it is kind of a reset for me, uh, to be around other people who, uh, recognize that I'm, that I'm doing an okay job, um, uh, because mm-hmm. unfortunately in the endometriosis world, it's very lonely, even a, you know, I, as a patient, it's very lonely, obviously. I mean, that's like so much of what we discussed at the end of summit, but for endometriosis surgeons, it's actually a very lonely world because you're out there doing what you know is right. And mm-hmm. you're constantly criticized for it. You're castigated. If God forbid you have a complication, everybody jumps all over you, uh, because, the types of surgeries you're doing are not the standard of care. The standard of care is just hormone, 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 mm-hmm. fulguration, hormone, 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 fulguration, hysterectomy, o- ophorectomy, you know, and so excision surgery is, it's like, it's like this voodoo world that we will operate in. And so it is, it is kind of nice to be in that, in that endometriosis summit world where like you're around like-minded people and that's really important. Yeah. And paradoxically, right when you do the right thing, meaning when you do endosurgery the right way, where you're excised, where you work within the confines of a multi-specialty team, where you uh, sort of know what you can and can't tackle, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Paradoxically, doing the right surgery there the first time uh, is much better than the standard of care, quote unquote, right? Right. 
Mm-hmm. So, so, and, and I agree with you with Adam, you know, like if you don't show up once a year and see the patients, the advocates, the other doctors, the family members of patients who have, have sought out care or are seeking care, uh, you sort of lose track of your compass because everybody's telling you you're doing the wrong thing all the time. And so, all the time. so yep. it, it's all the very, time. very important. I agree with Adam 100%. Paradoxically, I seem to be using that word a lot today, but that, yeah. that's yeah. Yeah. Sure what's up with that. But I have a urology meeting, um, like the national and international urology meeting that's coming up at the end of the month. And uh, the Endo Summit won an award there for patient advocacy. So they're they're actually presenting some stuff there. Guess how many other presentations in an international conference over four days have to do with endometriosis? Zero. Zero. Guess how many have to do with pelvic pain in general? One. 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 Guess how many have to do with pelvic pain in women? Zero. 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 <laughs> it's unreal. It's unreal, right? So, right. so the Endo Summit is sort of the only um, avenue that I get to see sort of all of my people. I call them my people, right? My, yeah. my yeah. co-workers, my uh, thought leaders, my patients, my, my advocates, my families. That's the only time you get to do it because there are other endometriosis conferences, but none of them incorporate everybody the way that they know no i mean i go to aagl uh actually you know i stopped going to aagl i've been to aagl in three years um that's our our big you know minimally invasive gynecologic conference and um i i stopped going because it doesn't recharge me the way that the endometriosis summit does um i go to the endometriosis summit and i come back feeling like i'm doing the right thing and, and there was this sense of, you know, it was so great being down there and I got to see my mentor, Scott Fur was down there and I got to see Shanti Moling, who I trained with yeah. and, and Eve and, um, you know, Delumba and, and Ken and just everybody, Andrea, people that I respect the hell out of and that I look up to, you know, David, uh, Redwine in, in this world and people who are out there and they've always been kind of the rebels. Like they've always been seen as like, what they're doing is, you know, not the standard of care. And here I am in, in small town, Northern Idaho, and everything I do is constantly criticized. Uh, if I, you know, like I said, if God forbid I have any sort of complication, no matter how minor it is, it's, I've got everybody kind of jumping all over. And it was so nice to be down there and, and just be around those people. And when I got back to Idaho, well, I got back, I flew into the Spokane airport and I landed at like 10, you know, 10, 15 at night. And it's about a 45 minute drive. And so there was really no one else on the road. And I was just kind of alone with my thoughts. And there was like this almost sinking feeling, like driving back to Coeur d'Alene from the airport after having this, you know, being there for, for three days with just, and feeling so energized and feeling um, so alive. I mean, uh, talking with patients, talking with advocates, talking with people who are as passionate about endometriosis as I am. And it was hard. I mean, driving home, just like the only car on the freeway, just like, uh, I got to go back where yeah. everything I do is, is not the standard of care. It's, it's not, it, what I'm doing is like crazy voodoo, um, radical, unnecessary surgery. I hear that a lot. Well, he does unnecessary surgery, you know? Um, so it's just, it's just such a paradox to use that way. You know, it's just Mm -hmm. such a, a weird, and that's, and that's why, like, I feel so energized by the endometriosis summit. And it's not just seeing the other doctors, it's seeing the physical therapists and Mm -hmm. it's seeing like, I'm, I think I'm so passionate I think I'm so passionate about endometriosis that I've turned so many of my patients into advocates. I get calls all the time from my patients like, hey, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And like at the endometriosis summit, I had two patients who showed up from uh, Helena, Montana um, (laughs) because they're there and they were there last year as well. And they're there because they are so passionate now and they're coming down to Florida from Helena, Montana. Mm-hmm. To be around this this energy that Sally and Andrea have created. I mean, that's the only word for it. It's energy. Yeah, but it, we've it's that really, 
energy and community, right? Those right. are the two. So, so community is important because, um, you know, if you if you see that your what your neighbor is doing, right? You aspire to, you know, if your lawn is not as nice as your neighbor's, you're going to try to make your 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 lawn a little nicer. And so we all sort of strive for excellence. And at the same time, we're all held accountable together in the same room by those same patients and providers and, yeah. and advocates. So, yeah, Adam, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I didn't feel the same deflating uh, sense that you did. Maybe it's because I didn't land in Idaho. Jersey has better restaurants, though. Uh, <laughs> well, I haven't been to Idaho in a while, so that could be. <laughs> Coeur d'Alene's nice. Coeur d'Alene. No, oh, okay. I mean it was more just it was more just the the deflating feeling of just like I feel like I'm going back to a place where I am now alone. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. That, that was what it, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. You know, yeah. it was just yeah. like. I am now, after being surrounded by people that understand what I do, that actually think I'm good at what I do. That's the coolest part mm -hmm. of being down there and talking to physical therapists and patients and other doctors. Like, yeah, we've seen your surgical videos. We've, you, we've seen your outcomes. Like, you're, you're actually good at this. Mm -hmm. And then coming back to a place where it's like, you're not good at this. You're, 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 not, you're not special. You're not good at this. You have complications. You're not doing the standard of care. Everybody just needs to be on hormones. Yeah. Uh, everybody needs a hysterectomy. That's the deflating feeling. Yeah, but Adam, you know, nobody talks about the fact you put somebody on hormones, they get a DVT and a PE, right? That's that's not a complication, right? right. That's a right. 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 You you you, uh, you give a a twenty something year old irreversible infertility with right. hormones and castration. No, no, no big deal. That, that's, right. that's you do a hysterectomy and cause the patient a to be you know permanently sterilized you cause them pelvic pain chronic pelvic pain uh and truly and unsafely right because remember the general gynecologist who's actually practicing the standard of care uh has the highest rate of complications of any other surgery in the entire world look at the just look at the malpractice insurance premiums that's all you need to know uh, uh, and, and you go, all right, well, who, who here is doing the right thing? Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, Adam, and I, I think, you know, you're, you're in a really unique sort of situation where you're alone, but you're truly alone in that state where you have right. nobody to rely on. And I, I feel badly for you. So, you know, uh, but that's why you have uh, friends on speed dial, you know, you can always pick up the right. phone. And right. And I've got my partner. I mean, my partner, Dr. Young, is a she's a really terrific endosurgeon as well. And 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 slowly, I think the the tide is turning. I think you know, when I retire, whenever you know, hopefully soon. Um, <laughs> um, I I think that you know we we've we've changed enough minds. I think enough enough of the general surgeons, enough of the urologists have have have, have seen what I do, and they're like, okay he's actually getting rid of the disease. This is, you know, and, and, and they are, they are, I'm not trying to like, you know, bash on anybody by any sense of the means, but I, I think that the tide is, is turning um, even up here slowly. I mean, it's a, it's a big ship that we're trying to, you know, slowly turn around and it's not happening very quickly, but I think that the more that patients and advocates and phys it's uh, up here where we are it's it's mostly the physical therapists who are leading the charge you know um yeah, you know remember the, the inertia in medicine in general is a tough ship to steer in a different direction right so um i'll give you a little story so you know i work with andrea vidali obviously yeah. a, a, as a multidisciplinary team but i also work with uh, laura Liu. um right who, if you recognize the last name, her father, C.Y. Lou, who I get to I got to operate with when I, when I was an intern in general surgery, believe it or not. I, so that's I trained with C.Y. Yeah, so there you go. So, you know, C.Y., by, you know, not by a stretch, is one of the fathers of minimally invasive surgery. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? I can tell you with certainty, I haven't spoken to C.Y., uh, he was ridiculed and called mm -hmm. crazy for doing mm -hmm. laparoscopy, right? Yep. And it took a long time for that to become the standard of care yep. to do laparoscopic surgery. The same thing is happening now sort of with the transition to the robot. 
And that's also still a slow, you, you, you talk to many of the gynecologists that tell you, no, 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 laparoscopy is the way to go. But, you know, there's, the field is moving forward. The technology is moving forward. The understanding of the disease, disease is not, right? right? And so, because that's a much slower thing to evolve, much slower. Um, and that, you know, requires a group effort to move forward. And I, I wish you did go to AGL, Adam, you know, truly. Uh, you know, I, I think, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I'm going to go this year for sure. It's just, it's just, you know, it's hard when I'm picking a conference to sort of go to, um, it, it just, for me, it makes more sense to go to the endometriosis summit because, um, m- most of AGL is not dedicated to endometriosis care. And, and if, if you're someone who does, you know, probably 90% endometriosis, I mean, I do some prolapse surgery and things like that, but I'm 90% endometriosis you know to go to a conference where it's maybe like 20 percent endometriosis and and i think the the criticism maybe of those types of meetings is that what is being presented is still not as radical as what people like andrea are doing and scott fur and and ken and i mean so, you know, there's still kind of this tendency to sort of like toe the line and be more conservative and um, not really push for kind of these, you know, more uh, radical type of surgeries. The interesting thing about going back to CY, I mean, having worked with him and I didn't train a lot with him, he was kind of on the way out when I was there. Um, but I did some really cool cases with CY. I mean, the dude is just unbelievable i mean he was born with a it was like he was born with a you know a, a scope in his hand um he was he was brought before the medical board in the in the 90s based on the other ob guys in town sort of like basically saying he's not doing a standard of care uh he what he is doing is dangerous it's reckless it's irresponsible and he had to go before the the board of medicine who were trying to like take away his license for doing laparoscopic surgery and, and, and that is just now and look at where crazy. we are now that's yeah. crazy and that was just in like the mid 90s it's not that long ago it's 25 years ago yeah well, so, what's crazy so. adam is like you talk about that island of isolation out there but what's interesting is is that you are giving hope to this region specifically pacific middle america because there's just not a lot like where we're at it's kind of yeah. Same thing, not right? The it's yeah. not the Midwest. It's here and the Midwest. Well, I mean, there are, you know, there are some, there are some great surgeons. I mean, Sydney Mossbrucker um, is is over in Gig Harbor. Uh, you've got Nick Fogelson and Shanti right. in Portland. They're both, you know, amazing surgeons. Uh, but if you look more like Rocky Mountain, like Rocky Mountain. Yeah, no, like... I mean, basically for Colorado, you've got uh, I think Brian Nelson, and that's yep, yep. really kind of about it. And, and, and then I've not met Brian, but I've heard great things. I've heard he's a wonderful surgeon. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I get patients from basically North and South Dakota westward. I mean, I Montana, Wyoming, North, South Dakota, Idaho. Um, I used to get a lot more from Utah. And then since uh, Mark Dassel has started and then, and then Jeff has gone back there, uh, I don't see as many from Idaho or from Utah, excuse me. But I mean, it used to be just like, you've got this huge, huge swath of the country that has nobody you know mm-hmm. and it's just it's crazy yeah but i think it what is giving like you talk about it being isolating and like going back onto that road home where it was kind of depressing in a way after yeah. coming because at the summit and we talked about this before but like you walk in and it instantly you have this community and i don't know what it is i think it's just the shared commonality but you walk in and you have these people who already see you, who validate you. And for us, like that was, for me at least, I walked in and I was like, wow, I've never been to anything like this before. Mm-hmm. And then when you leave, I mean, at least we left together, you know, you have, you're kind of one of the few in your area. So it's that mountaintop high to the mountaintop low. Yeah, but yeah. the high for you would probably be you're helping people who have been invalidated themselves so many times you're now validating and they're not crazy which right. validates you like it's this it's such a great way of looking at we need you in this and this area the mountain plain 
the Midwest. <laughs> we need you in the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> not the Midwest. Not the Midwest. It's not the Midwest, but that region. was one of the jokes. <laughs> there was one of the jokes. The map of the United States. I know. Yes. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, like the Midwest, the Rocky Mountain no, region. No, but we need you in the. I, that's what I, I did say that. But if you want to be in the Midwest, you can be. Yeah. No. And I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not trying to be like doom and gloom. Like you know, woe is me. I, it just. No. It, it's, is, it is an isolating. Solid. It is. I. You know, when you're when you're like kind of in the middle of nowhere, which I am. I mean, I think, you know, there's a much bigger community in kind of that metro New York area, obviously, where there's very, very sort of, regions. you would think, right? But if you think about how many providers there are in the New York, New Jersey region for the number of people that are here. Yeah. It's it's pretty much the same story as Ida. Look, guys, it's a national problem. This is not a national That's true. For sure. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Well, it's it, the it fact that there be... were so many doctors were there, what... Were there like 20 doctors? I don't know how many were there, but yeah, but it's all it's always the same doctors. It's right. always the same, it's always the same doctors that are are have been screaming from the mountaintops for you know 10, 15, 20 years now. And and I think it would be great if somehow we could get like a you know, there are something like 70,000 OB guys in mm -hmm. America, and there's like less than 200 excision surgeons in the US. Like it'd be great if somehow we could get like you know, 10,000 ob guys in those rooms and hear those stories, hear the, hear your stories, hear, hear from the physical therapist, hear from the, the urologists and the, you know, the general surgeons like Joe and like the, the, there really does need to be this collaborative multidisciplinary effort. Um, but I think more so just hearing from patients and, 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 and hearing that the way that they've been treated, because I don't, I like, it, it's horrific. Some of the stories you hear and, um, Adam, were you there? Uh, were you at the at the conference in Hoboken, like one no. of the original? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do exactly. you remember there? Yeah, there you go. So, I think it was either the first or second year that we did the conference. Um, we did an exercise where we put up a, a whiteboard, and we had people come up and write sort of the craziest thing that they've sort mm -hmm. of. I remember. Oh, I remember that it was. You remember that? Powerful. Yep. I cried. I mean, that was. I cried too. Ridiculous. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah. You know, um, I, I sort of miss. I, I wish they'd do that again because I think that mm -hmm. that reinforces for me, sort of, that I'm doing the right thing by mm -hmm. by all these patients. You know, mm -hmm. hearing that these patients have been ridiculed or told they're crazy mm -hmm. or or misguided, right, in some way. Um, I, I actually, I I think we're gonna. I'm going to beg that they do that again next year because I think that's super important. It was very powerful. There's a there's a local provider here um, who um, tells every woman with pelvic pain that they must have been raped and not remembered it. Um, that they've somehow suppressed the memory of being raped. And like that... That makes me want to cry right now because I see these patients in my office every single day and they're like, I wasn't raped. I have pain. This is right. real. This is not, I'm not suppressing some memory. I wasn't raped. And, and it's like, I'm sorry, but it's so hard to hear day oh. after day after day of hearing these patients, their stories of like, you know, you're just depressed. It's in your head. It's, but like to tell a patient that the reason they have pain was because they were raped. Right. Are you fucking kidding me? Right. Right. It's just, oh, sorry. But. No, and, and I like the thing is, is that that's not an isolated incident. No. Right. Yeah, that's, and that's what's multiple. infuriating about it. And so when we, for I, for us that come to the summit, in a way, it's really healing to meet you guys because mm -hmm. you have the compassion, and you have the the. I don't know, you validate us, even though we've been like for us, we've already seen an excision specialist and have felt validated by that, that we aren't crazy, that the trauma wasn't caused by some outlandish thing. It was a disease. And so it right. was for me very healing to walk in that room and see the compassion that you all showed us. <laughs> not only the compassion, but the passion, mm -hmm. like the passion that you have to do what you do is like nothing else I've seen. And I think that we need more compassion and passion, but I don't think that's going to happen unless other doctors hear these stories. Mm -hmm. 
because anyone with a soul (laughs) that cares for people in chronic pain and hear this are going to be like, what are we doing wrong? We were talking to Jose about that, about even the, the provider, um, the, um, what is it called? The not compassion, the empathy burnout. Mm -hmm. And it's really, you guys see the worst of the worst and have to have the most empathy, but there's burnout with that too. What drives that? What fuels you to continue going? Because that's hard. You talk about seeing that day after day, but like. So can I tell you, you know, when we, um, so I, I, I don't know if I told you guys, I was in the army for, for a couple of years in, in Israel. And, and uh, the reason I bring that up is because that shared experience that you get with people who you've sort of been in the thick of things with, that shared experience um, is a bond that is for life, right? And is it's a very powerful bond, obviously, and it, it um, energizes you to do all sorts of things when you are reminded of, you know, who, what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish. That for me is what the Endometriosis Summit sort of, that's the hole that it fills in my life in a way, mm-hmm. it, that it, it lets me have that shared experience with people who are in the trenches, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, on on both sides patient provider advocate family it it doesn't matter we're all sort of living a similar shared experience and to me that that's an overwhelming sensation it's it's a powerful sensation but it's a reinvigorating sensation i don't get burned out by that it's quite the opposite i i sort of feel justified in doing what i do day in day out Mm -hmm. from doing that Mm -hmm. yeah what about yeah, I mean the 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 burnout thing is real and I think for me I'm a person who I'm working on it in 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 therapy. Um but I tend to focus on my bad outcomes. I tend to focus on the negative. I tend to focus on the surgeries, the patients that I didn't fix. And that's hard. Um I somehow seem to forget the like, you know, the, the, the 95 out of a hundred patients who are significantly better. And I focus on like the five patients who maybe aren't better or occasionally sometimes worse. And, and it, it is, it is hard. It's exhausting. Um, it is, it is not. Um, and, and then when you're met with outside criticism as well um you know you you've already got this internal criticism like am i really good at this uh am i a good endometriosis surgeon um can i do these cases um and then you're also you know you've got your own internal monologue where you're 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 criticizing yourself constantly constantly i come home every day after surgery and like i had five surgeries today and usually wednesday is like my sacred time like i come home and I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to text anybody. I like, it, you know, I'll put my phone away and I put on a record and I just lay on my floor and listen to music and just, and just think like, what, what could I have done? Um, what could I have done better? Uh, what could I, you know, is there, is there a way that I, that I could have approached that differently? And, and it is, it is exhausting. I mean, it truly is, um, it, yeah, it's exhausting. But Adam, when you yeah. when you do that, right, because I think every good surgeon goes through that. Yeah. Uh, you know, the self flagellation and the self doubt. Yeah. yeah, that's the only way. But but when you do identify something that you could do better. Yeah. And then implement it. And you do better. Isn't that the best feeling in the world? It is. It is. Yeah. And there are times, you know, I think like, oh, I should have done that. And then I go in the OR the next time and I do that. Uh, or I'll, I'll take a slightly different approach to something and, and do it well. Um, yeah, so I wasn't, you know, I'm not trying to say that like, I'm, you know, constantly like, oh, you know, I'm just criticizing myself all the time. But it is, a, I think the, the original point of discussion that we were making was that, um, you know, this idea of empathy burnout, and, and how do you sort of sustain this continuous, um, it, it does take a lot of energy. I mean, it, it does, you, you give a lot of yourself to your patients and you give a lot of your time and you give a lot of your heart to your patients. 
and it is it is exhausting and uh i could see how people could burn out uh there are times when i sometimes feel that i'm like oh you know what am i doing you know but the i feel so energized by things like this like something as simple as this like talking to you guys and and it just it just makes me all you know like yeah i'm all excited again and i i constantly am watching like all the endo summit uh talks that 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 Sally puts on and Andrea put on and, and it does it does that's what energizes me is things mm -hmm. like this and the endo summit is just I mean for me it's like you know just a three-day like endorphin rush <laughs> I mean it really is like it's just, it's just we don't sleep no you don't sleep you have to have the endorphin rush yeah, you, you don't, don't sleep. sleep you're hanging out with other people who are yeah. like-minded you're hanging out with patients and and there's no there's no hierarchy at the endo summit. And it's that's not what's like, awesome. well, the surgeon, the surgeons are over there, the PTs are over there, the advocates are here, the patients are. Here. We're all hanging out. Everybody's right. hanging out at the pool, at the restaurants, at the events, at the. Right. And it's just that. I mean, it, it's just it's three days of just you know mainlining dopamine is what that is. It's so yeah. fun. It's so great. I mean, I know we left, and I, I mean, I went there kind of a little timid and like, oh, we're doing this podcast, you know, like I, I hope we're doing it justice. I hope we're doing the right thing. And we came back and we're like, okay, we're re-fired up again. Like it gave right. us the energy to keep doing what we're doing and putting the content out there that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting to see like the different variety of people that are there and how much we learn just from their little stories and from what they bring to the table. It's like everyone's sitting around this big round table and, and having this deep discussion and then you're getting fueled and and then you're laughing a lot we laugh so much yeah like yeah my face hurt when I, was <laughs> home. I was like oh i've been part of it might have been a sunburn but i have you know we were just talking about like today and stuff and just us talking about it like my face we start laughing automatically like my face i'm smiling i'm like my cheeks already hurt like i don't even understand how we are not even talking to everybody yet and we're already <laughs> laughing and having mm -hmm. a good time and you guys aren't even here yet so right um yeah it was it got, it got much sadder once we showed up <laughs> i know sorry yeah, i feel like i'm like started. my whole point was to like get on and just talk about how amazing the end of something was and how we were all so energized and said i got on i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> well but, but was that shows your true doing? compassion and passion mm -hmm. you know but no, I just, I, yeah, no, I, I think it's, I think it's an incredibly important event. Um, you know, as long as Sally will have me, I'll keep, and even if she doesn't invite me, I'm going to just keep showing up no matter what. <laughs> You're going to be the, the sad number outside the door. Yeah. <laughs> anything, anything yeah. for me. Yeah. Well, well, I don't know. Like, we should, we'll uh, trade uh, endo advice for tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should put together a talk for AGL, you know? What's that? I think the younger the younger providers at the Endo Summit need to put together a talk for the AGL, of course. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Would yeah, AGL that'd... have patients there or no. advocates speak? Advocates, probably. Yeah, Susan Susan Richards gave a really powerful lecture. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Susan, but she's a um, she's a kind of Pacific Northwest person. She's really close with Cindy Mossbrucker and Susan's a, Susan's a wonderful person. She's a, a doctor, nurse practitioner, um, but also an endometriosis patient who's been through the ringer. You know, she had mm -hmm. all the, the story, all the stories from everyone you've ever heard have also happened to Susan. And uh, Susan's great. And she gave a talk a number of years ago. It was very, very powerful. And like her own experience as a healthcare professional mm -hmm. who understands more about medicine than your average joe mm -hmm. and and she was still continuously gaslighted and told that what she was experiencing was not real and 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 she didn't really know what she was talking about like sit down we'll, we'll tell you how it's going to be sweetheart you know kind mm -hmm. of thing um and so she gave a really powerful talk so there are i think there are opportunities for that for sure you know we i think we just have to be loud i guess yeah well, we know how to be loud and the yeah. whole 
hotel heard us, but we weren't exactly quiet. Chelsea, Chelsea for sure. The whole hotel heard us. <laughs> yeah, Chelsea's the loudest voice in endometriosis. Yeah, she, I know. Literally. I know. Especially after one cocktail, it's the like. The entire hotel heard how you almost got abducted at Applebee's. <laughs> Thank goodness we had you guys with us. Or else well, you had there. 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 Oh, yeah, you were there. I was rooting for it. I don't know. You were rooting. Yeah. <laughs> That Whatever was... you're sitting there with your fallopian tube beer mug, <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, what are you? Like he had it like sideways when we were at Applebee's. He had it the beer mug sideways. Not hold me. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's Not clarify. you. Yeah. Let's clarify. Three. It wasn't my mug. It was the mug that they served. <laughs> me. I like this mug with. <laughs> Maybe you should find one. <laughs> it would complement your socks. <laughs> That is the weirdest thing I've ever seen next coming up. Next to the Uber Eats driver eating his customer's food at the same thing. Oh my gosh. That was weird too. Yeah. Adam, did you hear about this? Oh, I heard all about it. Yeah. I, I heard, I heard Chelsea talking about it at the restaurant while I was at the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> it was so loud. So loud. Like, is that? Is that Chelsea? <laughs> <laughs> that Applebee's? I was sitting and having a nice, I was having a, sitting and having a nice quiet drink with Shanti Molly, and I'm like, <laughs> "That's Chelsea." I think it's Chelsea about Uber over at Almost getting kidnapped. That was the funniest. Oh my gosh! So just to give clarification for this, we went to Applebee's because it was late after we got back from Epcot. Right? Is that after Epcot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we got back from Epcot, and a bunch of us hadn't eaten dinner, so we went over to Applebee's and. Chelsea and I, we're all sitting at the bar. They didn't want to seat us for like 30 minutes or something. So we're just sitting at the bar and she is hoping and praying a crumb drops on her plate because she's so hungry. She's like, please, I'll just eat. Is that a cheese stick? I want a cheese stick. <laughs> that is really hungry. She was so hungry. So this, these two guys were sitting at the bar or whatever, and they were in their own world. And then this guy walks in and he's got like this button down polo with like the, I don't know how to, do, like golf shirt. Think like, or maybe not golf, maybe like office shirt comes in and She's like, what do you got in there? <laughs> what kind of food is in that what bag? What kind of food is in I that bag? I ready to take food from a stranger. I was that hungry. <laughs> and, and he's like, oh, I don't know. Let's look. So he opens it up. And I'm thinking it's his food. And they're, the guy's next to him. And they're all talking about what high rollers they are. And he's like, yeah, I'm an attorney. And we talk about, you know, I, you know, I, I prosecute people in all these different days. He's talking about how much of a high roller he is. And then he's like, here, you want these uh, French fries? And he goes to hand Chelsea French fries. And she's like, no, no, yeah, I'm no, good. I'm not going to eat that. <laughs> I'm not going to eat that out of his hands. Like, right. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> and he goes, okay. So he shoves like this wad of French fries in his mouth and orders a drink and then pays for his drink and tips. And after he left, we were like, how much did he tip? How much did he tip? How and she did like, the high roller big shot guy. Right. $2 for his drink. And the bartender's like, well, no, the other guy like threw a hundred out and was like, here, we'll cover, we'll cover his, we'll cover his, you, we'll cover you his tip. You earned it better. And then he's like, oh, okay. He's like, yeah, he's an Uber driver. <laughs> yeah. Picking up Uber Eats Picking food, Uber eating eats. the Uber Eats food of his customers. It was an adventure. It well, was... Can I just say this in case Applebee's wants to be your corporate sponsor? It's a fine dining establishment. It, it is it a was. fine dining establishment. It, it, it was. They saved us that night. It wasn't necessarily them. That guy was just, and we had a really great bartender. The bartender he was really great. Was yeah, there's an Applebee's yeah. next to my kid's gymnastics place, and every single day after gymnastics, George wants to go eat at Applebee's. It's his favorite restaurant. It's a very quality establishment. Very. I mean, they serve apparently great mozzarella sticks. I wouldn't know because I didn't get any. <laughs> Still kind of sad.